This is part two of Microchip's cryptography primer. In this part, we discuss authentication, integrity, and confidentiality. Let's look at a few terms which are often confused with each other. These three things should be at the forefront of our minds when we develop secure systems. Devices need to identify themselves, but that's not enough. I can tell you my name is Dan, but how do you know for sure? Devices need to authenticate, meaning they need to prove their identities. If I had to authenticate myself, I could show you my driver's license. My driver's license is issued to me by a mutually trusted authority, the Department of Motor Vehicles. You could examine my license, see it as a genuine product of the DMV, and be assured my name is really Dan. Then, after authentication, the ecosystem will authorize the devices with the appropriate accesses, accesses and privileges. When granting access and privileges, it's a good practice to limit them to only what the device needs. This will help defend your ecosystem. Every little bit helps. As another analogy to this process, consider a friend comes to visit. They knock at your door and identify themselves. Maybe they have a cold or there's some other reason you don't recognize their voice. So you ask them a question only they could answer. Once satisfied they are truly your friend, you open the door and invite them into your living room. Maybe the kitchen. Of course, you let them use the bathroom but you typically don't invite them into the bedroom or allow them access to your safe. You grant access to only those regions of your home which are appropriate for that particular visitor. Let's look at authentication a bit closer. When something authenticates, it means it is what it claims to be. Non-repudiation is a stronger form of authentication. It proves the specific origin of a message or data. Attestation is also a form of authentication. It's used in secure boot and firmware updates. It assures code has not been tampered with. There can be local attestation and or remote attestation. An example of local attestation would be a secure boot. An example of remote attestation is a remote host asking the device for proof it's still running 100% genuine code. We'll get into the mechanisms for attestation later in this presentation. The priority of cryptographic functions. CIA is often used as a mnemonic memory aid for the trilogy of security, which is confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. It makes sense. CIA makes us think of the Central Intelligence Agency. Central Intelligence Agency makes us think of security. By the way, you may have heard CIA defined as confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Availability is used when speaking in terms of cybersecurity. We use authentication when in the context of hardware enforced embedded security. Now let's consider the actual functional priority for that trilogy. It's actually AI and sometimes C. In practical applications of cryptography, we first authenticate a message, then we check its integrity. Finally, we make the message confidential by obfuscating it in some way, but only if the payload has value and we need to protect it. True security is most often attained by applying only the first two, authentication and integrity. Confidentiality is actually optional. Think about a networked lighting system where a lighting fixture takes commands from a controller. If the fixture can trust a message came from its controller and nowhere else, and if the fixture can verify the integrity of that message, does it really matter if the actual command was in the clear? Remember, the fixture will not respond to any command unless it's first authenticated and integrity checked. It needs to make sure it came from its controller and verifies the integrity of the message is whole, it has not been tampered with. So do we really need to encrypt the message? Maybe, maybe not. It's optional. It depends on whether the message payload is valuable or if it compromises security in any way. If the message payload is valuable or compromises security, then of course the message should be obfuscated from prying eyes. Many people equate encryption with security. It is not security. It's part of security. We need more to enable security. Encryption is actually the least important element of security in many situations. Some people use encryption as authentication. For example, they believe if the lighting controller 
encrypts a message to the light fixture and the light fixture can decrypt it, then everything is okay. It's not okay. That is a misuse of encryption and leaves open a number of potential vulnerabilities. When and where do we use encryption? When encryption is called for, it should be used everywhere. Remember that anywhere you use encryption in the stack, it only protects that level and below. A common mistake people make is relying on TLS for the application security. TLS protects data in motion. It does nothing to protect the application layer. If someone hacks your application, they will have access to your data in the clear. Thanks for watching Microchip Channels, and I hope you learned more about embedded security.